Let's be. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Spirit and Law and today we're going to be talking about empaths. Now, there is so much I can say about this topic and I'm going to try to make it as clear as possible um, and as always if you do enjoy this episode please do uh, check out the subscribe button below and if you'd like any topic discussed in Spirit and Law then feel free to leave a comment, it's always fun reading them. So let's get started with empaths. Now, empaths or empathetic people are people around us which are very, very in tune with not only their emotions, but in tune with emotions around them and emotions of other people. Now, some of these emotions can uh, vary from, I'd say, negativity, positivity, sadness, anger. These are people that can walk into a room and they can get the sense of everyone's emotions in the room. And this is also, um, it also works with spirits as well. They can sense the emotions of certain spirits in locations where the spirit was deceased. So why am I bringing up empaths on spirit and law? Well, empaths are very much in tune with the spiritual world and in tune with psyche, not only their own, but also psyche around other people, the psyche of maybe a friend, a neighbour, a relative. Empaths are living among all of us. Now, what exactly, how exactly do you know what an empath is? Or are you an empath yourself? So some of the things about empaths is that they can be very overly sensitive. Well, they may be seen as overly sensitive. Um, certain movies will strike them a certain way that they find war and violence very, it will very much hit their heart. And they will also maybe come across as quite introverted people. They may be in a room full of people for say half an hour to an hour and then they have to go and recharge because a lot of the energy around them will tire them out. Um, this is another sign of an empath which hasn't shielded themselves. These are also people which can really walk in your shoes. They can look at you and they can pick up on traumatic experiences you may have had, um, good experiences you may have had, and they can pick up precisely what that experience is and how that felt for you if it was a, a really bad experience or not. So I'm trying to think of other things. They are very highly sensitive to a lot of things. So everything around them, they, they move with nature. They're very empathetic towards animals also, as well as children. They're very caring and they're very drawn towards children. And children and animals are very much drawn towards them. Um, if they are strangers, animals, they'd be very kind of uh, wagging tails and so forth. These people are very centred to the earth. And many of them are also known as light workers. And that is a whole nother topic. We have light workers indigo children uh we have so many things to discuss and it's such an exciting what's the word exciting topic that i could really talk about it all day but i want to give you guys the facts and the disadvantages of being an empath and the advantages of being an empath so let's start with the nitty gritty so because empaths are so perceptive to people's emotions events um, they can sometimes be seen as a lighthouse to everyone around them. Now, this can be for spirits that may be trying to find closure and trying to find a way to the other side. Uh, they would be a scene, imagine a dark room and the empath is a beacon of light. Or imagine a load of moths or mosquitoes around... A light. Now, I'm not saying that spirits are mosquitoes or anything. I'm just saying I'm trying to give the volume of how presented they are to both the uh, physical world and the spiritual world. So, as as well as um, spirits being attracted to empaths, there is also energy vampires, which are people. And these people are quite the opposite of empaths. Now, these people can be seen as always talking about themselves and whenever they have a conversation with you the conversation is always pointed towards them who they are 
their experience and uh, they just like to vent to you and never really ask you about your problems it will always be one-sided it will always just be about them completely they won't really address how you're feeling that day will more be about their issues and what they're working through and then once you've had a conversation with these energy vampires you'll feel completely drained and tired and you won't get the good vibration now once again good vibrations and bad vibrations is another topic but i'm going to briefly set here so some people give off good vibrations these can be light workers empaths just people who are generally grounded and they have a good intention when they want to talk to you. Now, energy vampires have a motive when they want to talk to you. The motive is to talk to you, vent to you, use up your lighthouse energy, and then move on. That is pretty much their motive. And this is why sometimes you won't hear from a energy vampire in a while. Then you might get a phone call out of the blue or a text. And when you meet, the topic will be about them and their worries and their concerns. And when you try to speak about your concerns and your worries, it will be like, oh, okay, that's bad. And then it will go back to them. So this is why empaths need to be very careful because of the sensitivity levels that empaths have. This can be extraordinarily uh, draining and it can cause a lot of emotional problems for an empath. Because they're going to take on board the problems as well as having the energy diminished from them and then they're just going to feel generally crappy after the encounter and because empaths are very kind of helpful people they will always go back to trying to help someone they will always go back to trying to listen to more problems it's in their nature this will be a continuous cycle over and over and sometimes empaths even marry and get in relationships with energy vampires and that is a whole different cycle within itself and it can make a very toxic environment for the empath and the energy vampire. The energy vampire gets the gain of the energy and the empath gets, I suppose, some validation that they're being addressed by someone if they do have a low self-esteem or they do feel crappy about themselves. So that's the negative side. Now the positive side is that empaths, whenever they speak to you, they can be very delicate souls and when they do talk to you every word they say is full of emotion and that's a rare thing to sit down with someone and see absolute passion in their eyes to see um, just sparkles in their eyes as they're going through the motions to, to get on that ride with them and just be on this amazing ride of in-depthness and if you really want to have a soul conversation this would be one of the best people to go to they take on your worries they they know who you are they identify with you and they get to know you on a level no one else will they don't care about the superficial they are past the superficial they want to know deep down under your skin your soul and they will happily vibe with your soul so any situation even before you say i'm feeling down or you might get a random phone call from them saying i thought i th got a feeling you're feeling down so they're very helpful very very helpful people and some of them do work as light workers so some of them are actually uh, masseuses some of them do uh, reiki some of them actually work a lot of them work in healthcare because they find they need to help people that is their purpose in life and they love it they they love helping people they love helping animals so in our lives we always come across maybe a caring doctor or a caring nurse and stuff like that and that's them um basically them a lot of them can be very artistic as well and some of them have presented with us presented us with the most beautiful works of art and the most beautiful films so empaths are i would say a rarity um they're really cool <laughs> I know I kind of ranted a bit there, but uh, I just have a lot of passion in empaths and kind of just getting on a spiritual level with things. Now, once again, these are my opinions. Oh, I didn't actually mention that before, but these are my opinions. A lot of people can believe in this uh, stuff. Some people can be like, oh, it's nothing. There's, there's nah. But, you know, like at the end of the day, uh, everyone has different beliefs and stuff. And I, I believe everyone is connected in certain ways. There is a lot of things we can't explain about sometimes 
feeling your heart strain when you think of a relative and then contacting them and finding out they're they're in trouble or something some things really can't be explained with human connection and it is fascinating diving into those unknown depths and trying to work out what they are and what connects us all because as life is going on and on and more and more a lot more people are resorting to mindfulness a lot more people are stopping in their daily lives and trying to get back to a ground they don't realize they're doing this but every time they use these apps because they just want to relax they're actually grounding their self they're grounding their psyche and they're grounding their soul and um it's it's interesting because it's being so integrated in as trendy and stuff that people don't realize they're doing it people don't realize they're astro projecting it's just awesome and uh yeah it's a uh, it's not so spooky for this month but it's quite a fun topic to talk about and <laughs> there's so much to talk about i suppose the spooky bit is the energy vampires so we can say that's the spooky bit of this podcast but uh, I appreciate you guys all listening to this one. And uh, I will be bringing more this month. You're probably going to hear Milo in the background. I am dog sitting right now with two puppies. <laughs> but yeah, thank you everyone for listening. And I will hear hear you. I will speak to you next time. Bye.